actually take to actually you know, eradicate that, eliminate that, and there's some really practical, cool strategies we can actually put in place. So I'm going to be, I want to get started now. So I love this quote, the pace and, and we forget this. Growing a baby, you know, is so critical and so much development goes on during that time and there's really critical kind of pieces going on and stages going on, but it's also a very vulnerable time for both mama and baby and I'm going to actually talk about that a little bit more. In terms of what's actually happening in the womb, industrial chemicals can really change that. They can actually really inhibit the growth of the mama, the growth of the baby. Um, they can change the neurons, they can change the DNA. And that's why I guess what I talk about a lot today is the importance of preconception care. I talk a lot about chemicals and what's going on in that process. Then I talk about at high levels, they wreak absolute havoc on the body. Um, they not only wreak havoc on the body in terms of mums and our hormonal changes. I mean, as a woman down the back, probably pregnant, <laughs> and I've got two kids myself massive changes hormonally and we know that some of the chemicals going into our bodies, endocrine disruptors, can actually really change the kind of chemical composition and, and also the hormonal levels of both mum and bub. So that's a really critical and low levels. What we're seeing in terms of pesticides, I'm going to talk about pesticides a little bit later. Pesticides are one of those really interesting things because it's about dose. You know, the higher dose, the more toxic it is. But what we're seeing with chemicals such as BPA and phthalates, which are in our everyday products, they're in plastics, they're in perfumes, they're in um, most skincare products in terms of phthalates, they're not detected, they're really low levels. They can pack a punch. You know, so often we've actually spoken about chemicals in terms of how much, you know, the more pesticides in our body, the worse our symptoms are. But in some of the kind of new chemicals, some of the nanotechnology, it's not about how much. It's about those low doses and those low doses can have such a big impact on our hormonal levels, our endocrine disruption and so forth. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but that's just to kind of put it in perspective. Let's go back to the beginning. What's this? Newborn baby, there is so much blood going on in there. It's amazing the amount of blood going actually on in there in terms of the circulation. And if we've got chemicals inside of there, one of the big myths that we have when I was pregnant, there was still this idea that the placenta is this barrier. Does that make sense? People kind of talk about it like it's this barrier. It is a barrier to some fat soluble chemicals, but not a whole lot. So there's a whole lot of chemicals that can actually pass the placenta, can pass the actual bloodstream and actually go into the bubba. Do you want to sit down there, darling? Yeah. That's actually a diva. <laughs> She's very cluey. This was actually the birth of my little girl. Um, she's about 20 months now. I think that was, yeah, in 2009. And it's a photo I'm most proud of, mainly because we did it um, at home, without drugs, unassisted, etc., etc. And it's funny because these days it's a rarity to actually hear that. We have high, the, one of the highest Caesar rates in the world and more than Caesar rates, so we're just behind the United States in terms of Caesar rates. But, but besides that, we have more medical interventions in our pregnancies. Our rituals surrounding pregnancies are related to ultrasounds, um, doctor's appointments, so we're seeing more of an intervention around our babies, therefore more chemicals actually involved. So I always put that up just to remind us of you know, the whole idea of natural birthing these days is such a rarity, unfortunately. And yet, it was funny when I've spent time, when we, we just recently came back from overseas, and most countries, you know, we went around, we were in, in Bali actually in Indonesia for part of our, our trip, and we went around the room. And it was hilarious because you went around the room and you said, where were you born? Where were you born? And there was a group of like 40 women and something like 38 of those women were born at home. It's, it's, it's to be expected. It's the natural way. Midwives were very involved and so forth. If you actually went around the room of most people here, it would be um, hospital, it was assisted, I had a Caesar, um, I had an epidural, it was in hospital, it was in a contained environment. It's just such a a different kind of way we're bringing babies into the world and how we bring our babies into the world is absolutely critical in terms of their health and well-being. What we do know, and that's our placenta, <laughs> I always put it up there. I put it up there because most people, it's funny, in most other cultures 
Most people have seen the placenta. It's part of their culture, it's part of their medicinal values, it's part of the ritual around having a, you know, giving a birth. And something like we did, a, we did a, a, a survey about three years ago, and it was something like 92 or 93% of women who have birthed their own babies had never actually seen a placenta. Um, and we're really missing out on the, the, the benefits of, of really involving the placenta in our own lives in terms of medicinally, but also the ritual aspect of it. Um, the other thing that I do, and I work on projects which slice and dice placentas and umbilical cords, and I look at what's in them. So I, and, and so what that tells me is it tells me what's in the bubba, and it tells me what's in the actual mama. So what's going on chemically, and I'm going to actually talk about what's that, what we're finding in newborn babies and what we're actually finding in mamas. Our placenta. Very proud of that. Well, before I do that, one of the tragedies of our time, I would say these are some of the tragedies of our time. Well, the question I get from most women after I've given my presentation is this question, am I allowed to keep my placenta? I think that's a really hilarious question. Not, not to make fun of anyone at all, but we are so accustomed to, I mean, this is our body. This is my body and it's my baby's body. And yet we constantly, you know, people ask me, this is probably the most common question I got, am I allowed to keep my own placenta? It's actually hilarious. When it's scooped up in hospitals, it's put in a biohazard bag and taken away. You know, most women don't actually see it. But, you know, I always want to empower women and empower parents and let them know that it's your body. People should be asking you, um, you know, can I take away your placenta or would you like to keep it? it? It's just assumed in most other cultures that parents would want to keep their culture. What we did with our placenta is that we buried it, we planted, we actually um, used it medicinally, and I'm not going to go through that in this talk, but we used it medicinally. Um, really great for things like iron stores. I lost quite a bit of blood, so fantastic for iron. Um, we, and we also used it as a ritual as well. So we actually planted a placenta tree as, it, as Jetta got actually older. My five-year-old was really involved with that. There was, we, when she, she's really interesting because most kids are not freaked out by it. They think it's a really natural, normal part of you know, pregnancy. She was fascinated by it. When, it when when it actually came out, she was like, wow, that's amazing. My midwife actually showed her, you know, where the baby's head was, etc., etc. And then we buried it and we were able to actually pl plant a placenta tree, for example. What we are doing is losing cultural significance, I think, by actually removing that whole pregnancy and that interventions around pregnancy and the medicinal qualities. And as I said before, the whole rituals around pregnancy are very much, when's my ultrasound? Um, when's my medical appointment? Um, it, it's very rarely around, um, you know, the, the growth and stage and the ritualization of spirituality around our baby because they are doing such incredible purposes inside of us. So I always put that up. So what chemicals do you suspect might be in newborn babies, unfortunately? What do you think might be in them? Any ideas? Any ideas? Heavy metals, copper, mercury, methyl mercuries, ions. What else might be in there? It's, it's a really scary kind of concept. What else? But we, we find hundreds. What else do you think might be in there? Fluoride, what's that? BPA. Yeah, BPA, bisphenol A. Has everyone heard of BPA? Most people probably here would. It's in plastics in particular. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a chemical that makes plastics malleable, um, soft, hard as well. So you, you, you can, you know, kind of mould plastic and then it makes them very hard. It's been banned in most places in Europe. It's been banned out of baby bottles in Canada. Last year, the ACCC deemed it acceptable in our baby bottles here in Australia. So what it does is an endocrine disruptor. It's a hormone disruptor. At low doses, it, it really packs a punch to male sex organ, organs. And I'm going to talk about hyperspadius a little bit later, where the, the um, tip of the penis, so the opening of the penis, is actually occurring on the base of the penis these days. It used to be one in thousands with baby boys. These days, it's around about one in 300. And we know that that's got direct links with things such as plastics and BPAs and so forth.